A Fox News alert, an incredible story of survival. Seven-year-old Sailor Gutzler released from the hospital after trekking nearly a mile from the wreckage of a plane crash that killed her entire family. In freezing temperatures and with several broken bones, Sailor stumbled onto Larry Wilkins' doorstep. That man, Larry Wilkins, joins us now from Kentucky. Mr. Wilkins, thanks a lot for coming on this morning. So, you, Thank you, sir, for having me. You played a vital role in really a miraculous story. Uh, unfold it for us. Would you, you're sitting at home. What happened? Yeah, well, uh, I didn't play a major role. I just opened the door to a little girl that needed some help. Uh, she came to the door, and uh, little dogs actually heard her knock on the door. She was a real, real quiet knock. And uh, I went to the door and, and uh, seen this little girl about seven years old. Bloody little legs was just eat up. Looked like somebody had been beating her with a switch. Nose was bloody. Of course, trembling, crying. And she told me that uh, her mom and dad were dead that she'd been in a plane crash and that the airplane was upside down. And she said, can I stay here? And I said, come on in. And I got her laid down on the couch and propped her feet up and called 911. Larry, do you remember the, the first thing that you said to her as you're, as you're trying to comfort her and your dogs, your two little dachshunds are, are, you know, kind of acting almost as therapy dogs helping her through all this. Do you remember what you said? <laughs> well, actually, I, I tried to get some information from her as far as, as if I could find a contact, you know, to call somebody to come and help her, you know, somebody that she was familiar with. Uh, after the police came, uh, well, before the police came and after I got her the, the call of 9-11, I uh, went in the bathroom, got a washcloth and, and wiped the blood off of her face and her legs. And uh, fortunately, the state police were close by. They were here in less than 10 minutes. And then he interviewed her, but uh, little girl was was really calm considering the situation she was in. Uh, but well, if you talk to a seven year old child that's trembling, crying, and trying to talk at the same time, it's pretty difficult to understand her. Uh, I'll probably ask her her name half a dozen times, and when I did get the name, I got it wrong. <laughs> I thought it was Kaylee, and I think it's Sailor. <laughs> well, you, you she's a very 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 brave little girl. Mr. Wilkins, you have 11 grandchildren, she, and, and I was so moved to hear that she really saw you as kind of kin. She wanted you to go with her in the ambulance for treatment. Can you tell us about that? Well, that, that was probably because that was the only familiar face that she's seen. And the EMTs, uh, they were doing their job, but... When they come in, they had to put their hands on her, uh, feel to make sure she didn't have any broken bones or, or uh, any lacerations or anything like that. And that kind of got her excited. And then they put a, a, the neck brace on her, you know, for her neck. And they put a board on her broken wrist. And then when they hauled her off, they strapped her to the board. And that really got her excited. She was, it scared her. Uh, like I say, but for a seven-year-old girl, she was outstanding. Mm, she sure sounds it. You said that you think she understood that her parents and sister had been killed? She, she told me that her parents were dead. Uh, I asked her how mm. she knew that, and she said, well, I tried, to, I tried to wake them up, and I couldn't wake them up. Uh, but, of course, seven years old, I, I didn't, I had no idea if they were really dead or not, you know, but... Uh, uh, unfortunately, they were. But it's, it was kind of strange to me. She never mentioned to anybody else in the plane. I didn't know there were but two other people in the plane. Let's talk about just the inner strength <laughs> of this little girl. Uh, it's amazing that she was able to walk away when the impact or uh, the crash killed every single other person on board. But then uh, one account was that she picked up a branch and, and from a burning wing was able to light it and on fire. And that's how she was able to see her way three quarters of a mile and saw your light on. Talk about the terrain that she had to go across and how rough that would have been on her little legs. Ma'am, I don't like to walk out there in the daylight. 
And when she came to the door, she was barefooted. She had one sock. Uh, she was dressed for Florida weather. She had just shorts on and a, a light shirt. And it was a, a little bit of a drizzle. It wasn't a rain, but it was a little bit of a drizzle. And uh, it'd be like walking across the field and, and walking across a brush pile about every 20 feet. And there was a, between here and where she was at, there's a ditch probably 17 foot deep. And how the little girl done it, I'll never know. Uh, knowing briars, what she... Go ahead, Larry. She had a lot, of briar, a lot of briars and a lot of thorns. We had an ice storm here in 2008. And, uh, of course, this is being in the woods. It's never been cleared out. And there's a lot of downed trees and limbs. And uh, I can't imagine walking through it barefooted in the daylight when I could see. I, I can imagine, Larry, that you've thought a lot about this in, in, in the last day or so. How do you, how did this happen? What, 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 what do you think her ability was to overcome all of that? Forget about surviving the crash, which is a miracle in itself, but then to come to you, to see the light on, at, at your home and come through that terrible, terrible uh, terrain. How, how did it happen? The only, only thing I can guess at is that there's a security light out there, and that's probably the only light she's seen. Uh, and here, there's, uh, there's only three houses here in, in this neighborhood that's permanent residence. Everybody else is a, it's a vacation spot. And there's only three of us that live down here permanently. And uh, if she'd went the other direction, she'd have crossed the highway, probably in, in uh, 125 or 30 feet. But instead, she walks the straight line. And fortunately, she'd come to, to my house. If she'd went the other direction, she'd still be walking. Uh, Mr. Wilkins, have you spoken to any member of her family, and do you plan on seeing her again? Uh, no, have not spoken to any member of her family, and I'd love to see her again. What would you say to her when when you saw when you saw her again? <laughs> I have no idea. I'd, I'd probably give her a big hug, tell her I'm I'm really really proud of her. Wow, Larry Wilkins. We thank, thank you for your time today, and, and certainly we're thankful that you are home and that your light was on. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Yeah. Thank you, Larry Wilkins.